Biden is urged to send direct planes that, that Ukrainians can't yet operate, like the F-16, tanks uh, that the, uh, they cannot yet operate. The tendency to send Americans to operate those tanks and get them right away into business will be very strong along with that. I can only hope that Biden will be pressed by a large part of the public, pressed not to involve the U.S. directly in that war and to be pursuing negotiations, which it is currently absolutely uh, eschewing, is rejecting the idea of negotiations. There's increasing information that one year ago, in early April 2022, the Zelensky and Putin essentially had an agreement within very close to an agreement on a pre-war uh, status quo, returning to a pre-war status quo in Crimea, in the Donbass, in uh, relation to NATO and everything else, but that the U.S. and the British, and Boris Johnson went over that and said, we are not ready for that. We want the war to continue. We will not accept a negotiation. I would say that was a crime against humanity. And I say that with all seriousness um, to the idea that we needed to see people killed on both sides in order, quote, to weaken the Russians, not for the benefit of the Ukrainians, but for an overall geopolitical strategy was wicked. And however the war started, and I think with uh, both incredibly uh, bad judgment by Putin and aggression and atrocity, and on the other hand, provocation by the United States in the sense of policies that were consciously foreseen to increase the probability of a Russian crime of this sort, tells me that I think there were a lot of Americans who wanted this war. And they got exactly what they wanted, even better than they could have imagined. Huge arms sales to our allies. The U.S. again having an essential role in Europe with an indispensable enemy, an enemy that we could not run the world without Russia. And Russia stepped into that role very willingly to say that Russia had no choice uh, but to do what they did do is fairly absurd. That's like saying you can provoke a person to shoot themselves in the foot, or in this case, to kneecap themselves. Uh, Putin had no choice but to kneecap himself and to give himself 800 more miles of adversarial border with Finland and to uh, resuscitate, resuscitate NATO and get these arms sales and so forth. It's just absurd. I also wanted to bring up China, because in 2021, you revealed that the government had drawn up plans to attack China uh, with nuclear weapons over a crisis in the Taiwan Strait. Can you talk about the relevance of that today and when you got that information? Yes. I reveal that information right after The Economist magazine had a cover with Taiwan on the cover and a big bull's mark, uh, bull mark on, on front of it, showing that it was, quote, the most dangerous place in the world at that point. And what was at stake was a U.S. intervention in the politics of China, namely supporting a secession movement, an independence movement, by a portion of China regarded almost universally by Chinese as part of China, uh, supporting it in a way which the Chinese were totally forecasting uh, would lead to war, that they would not accept it any more than Lincoln accepted the secession of the Confederacy in this case. And we were pressing for that in a way that I have to say I can't entirely understand. People act as if they want war with China. How can that be? Selling them arms? Yes, I see that. But why they, why they want to change the relation of Taiwan, which has been pretty much the same since 1979, right now, in a way that the Chinese guarantee us will lead to war, uh, is inscrutable to me. 